Shalom. Kahlayla Yahweh. Bahashem. Yahweh Shai. Bahashem. Rakakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, I will stir up your peer remembrance. Well, the Israelites are waking up and it's causing great fear upon heathen and Gentile nations. It is in direct opposition to this universal religion, a one world order, one government, one people, one race. So the Israelites waking up to our heritage showing and proving using the scriptures that the Most High has not cast off his people. It is causing great friction and opposition to the global elites. Let's go into the scriptures. <clears throat> I stir up your peer remembrance. Let's go to the book of Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 11. Excuse me. Book of Second Peter, chapter three, verse one. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. So Baruch chapter two, verse twenty nine through thirty one, tell us in the lands of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And that's what we're doing. And our enemies are watching as the Spirit of the Lord is preparing a table right before our enemies. So we're being fed by the bread of life, which is the true doctrine, and that the Most High has not cast us away. And He's only dealing with Israel, starting with the elect. <clears throat> and when you look at that word and go into it, remembrance we knew this information before our spirits are eternal so through our spirit that spirit of remembrance is being stirred up our spirits are ancient our bodies are temporary shells let's read it again <clears throat> book of second peter chapter three verse one this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. So our spirits are being, <clears throat> the spirit of the Lord is making intercession with the elect of Israel, a one third. That's how we stirring up our pure minds of remembrance. What is our mind? Our temple where the most high dwells. And that's with his son, Yahweh Shai, through the spirit of truth. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. <clears throat> Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. So the mouthpiece of the Lord are the prophets, apostles, elders, teachers, an extension of of his right arm. So the right arm of the Most High Yahweh is Yahweh Shai. And the prophets are an extension of Yahweh Shai. Let's keep going. 
Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. How are we remembering the days of old? Through the Holy Spirit and searching the scriptures daily and being taught. We're being taught by our fathers, the ancient spirits from the days of old, elders, apostles, prophets. Let's keep going. <clears throat> so what are we remembering? The book of Deuteronomy, book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So now we're recognizing through the curses of Bible prophecy who we are. So this word is what? A spirit of truth, ancient wisdom. So that sign points to none other but the children of Israel that were scattered and sold to our enemies. Now all of a sudden our enemies have a one size fits all in all be all solution to cure us of our illnesses. You got to be kidding. Deuteronomy 28 verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So this sign is an everlasting sign on who the Most High's chosen are. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy power with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So we are sold to our enemies, not our friends. Let's go to Sirach 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Though he humble himself and go crouching, Yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hadst wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come nigh, wild beast? Notice, remember my words. So that spirit of remembrance is being stirred up through the Holy Spirit, an ancient spirit of wisdom and truth. Let's go to Deuteronomy. 28, verse 49. So we are never to trust those that we were sold to. They hate us. There's no such thing as a universal doctrine. Most High only cares about Israel. Pursuant to Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20. Amos 3 and 1. Let's keep going. And the covenants, both old and new, are for Israel. Deuteronomy 28, verse, <clears throat> excuse me, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the ends of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, who exhausts himself as the eagle, Esau Edom, and he is the end of the world. Second Ezra 6 and 9, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob 
is the beginning of it that follow. So our enemies start with Esau Edom, pursuant to, pursuant to Psalms 83, followed by the other nations. <clears throat> Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of old, nor show favor to the young. This is an eternal hatred against the sons and daughters of Jacob, so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. Let's go to Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. For the elders, the apostles, the prophets, and teachers, pursuant to Isaiah 30 and 20, are saying this is the way, the way of truth. But most people are rebellious, stiff-necked, gainsayers. Jeremiah 6, verse 7, book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 17. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken the sound of the trumpet or words of Bible prophecy, admonishment through words of truth and instruction and reproof and rebuke. Jeremiah 6, verse 18. Therefore hear, ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba, and the sweet cane from a far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. So idolatry, witchcraft, man-made philosophies are an abomination to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh a smoke in his nose. Jeremiah 6, verse 21. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north country, and a great nation, and shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea, and they ride upon horses, set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. Well, this happened in ancient ba Babylon. It happened in ancient Babylon, and it happened again through the daughter of Babylon, America. Because we are stiff-necked and hard-headed people. The spirit of the Lord is stirring up the spirit of pure remembrance through his comforter, the Holy Spirit of truth. And we are remembering the days of old and coming back to him. And it's causing great fear. And they're losing sleep over this truth because this truth cuts a one-world Universal doctrine, where all nations can come together, as in the days of old, are trying to build the tower, the Tower of Babel, under the daughter of Babylon, Esau, Edom, the Edomites. Well, the Most High is stirring up the pure remembrance through our soul, starting with this truth, and the elders, apostles, and teachers, Kwame Yasharala and the Bada Baba. See you on the next lesson. Lord willing, we got next. Lord willing, Shalom, Barakatham.